Pat and I are having a uh, discussion uh, here um, about a book that I uh, read, mm, I don't know, about a month ago. It comes out today. Does it come out today, James? Today. Uh, James uh, James uh, uh, Rollins is here, and he has written a new book called The Devil Colony, a Sigma Force novel. I loved it. Um, I want you to know, I'm LDS. I'm, I'm Mormon. Pat is also. Uh, and... Um, Pat has a problem because the, the you know the doctrine of the church, if you will, uh, is is you know is not accurate or or whatever. Well, um, there I mean there's a few. Yeah, problems. there's a few things. Yeah, there's a few things there's, that are. But I mean, than... I don't think we were also. I don't think our. I don't think our founders were also you know looking for gold in uh, the belly of uh, you know a buffalo. Uh, so. You know. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Um, <laughs> this song, just how my, this book started, was uh, an argument over dinner between two two Mormons. They were on opposite side of the fence about this specific issue, uh, and that's how this book started was because of an argument. Really? What what was the uh, what what was the argument exactly? They were they argue one of the the prim, one of the uh, tenets of the Book of Mormon is that the Native American Indians of this continent uh, have a, uh, a lineage back to some of the lost tribes of Israel. Yes. Now, on face value, that might seem like a wild claim, um, but me as a novelist, I was listening to this conversation, seeing it get more and more heated. I thought, well, if they're this excited about this, maybe there's a story here. Mm -hmm. So I began doing a little bit of research, and I uncovered some really fascinating uh, information about the very likelihood that there might be a connection between the Lost Tribe of Israel and the Native Americans. Yeah, there's there, the founders actually believed this kind of stuff. They I mean, you can believe whatever you want about uh, uh, Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon, whatever. Um, but f take that out of it. The founders had arguments themselves saying, these, th these, these are Jews. These, the, the American Indians are Jews. And part of the reason Lewis and Clark went out uh, was because Jefferson was convinced that the uh, the burial mounds that you see that what what do you call those things uh, the, the Indian mounds the Indian mounds around the country were Egyptian in nature. Yep. Is that what your research showed you? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Jefferson had actually a secret message to Congress before he sent out the Lewis and Clark expedition. Um, it was only released to the Congress. No one else knew about it, and basically it was admitting that he was sending this expedition out uh, as a uh, as basically spying on the Indians, trying to find out really where are they from, what is their origin. Uh, so he was fascinated by that. Now, have you seen that message? How do you know that that message existed? Oh, well, it's in the it's in the historical record. It's from 1803. Uh, the, the you can actually read it online. They have the you know the the entire message has been uh, been released. You can read it. It, it is amazing to me that um, uh, we have wiped out so much of the Indian history, uh, starting with Andrew Jackson, who I think was just an evil sob. Um, but it, it's amazing how we wiped all of this. How this just was lost. All of a sudden, it, it was just um, uh, we buried all of the. Um, all of the things that would make one curious about what was this civilization that was here. It, I mean, I'm going to give you one example. By the way, I, I, one of the reasons I wanted to come to this studio today yeah. was the origin of this book started actually in this studio. I don't remember two years ago when I was promoting uh, the Doomsday Key and I came to your to your studio. I had a, co a copy of Common Sense. Uh, I had not. I hadn't even started the next Sigma novel, but I had read that, and I thought, yeah, "There's a story here. I want. I want to do more research. You know, Washington seek the truth. I thought I'm going to seek the truth, find out wow. more about the founding fathers. Wow. And that's when I discovered that connection between the founding fathers and the Indians. And the more I looked, the more that connection became deeper and deeper. And I found out basically that there's some evidence that the Iroquois Nation, which was a group of six tribes, warring mm -hmm. tribes, had banded together to form a union 250 years before the founding of our country formed their own little constitution, and that that constitution influenced our constitution. Okay. I talked to David Barton, because when I read your book, I talked to David Barton, and I called him up, and I said, you know who he is? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, and I said, David, the Iroquois thing. He said, absolutely untrue. He said, there are there are people that fight and say that it is true. He says it's not. What What is what is your evidence? The, the Iroquois that? influence theory, um, back about maybe 20 years ago, it was very well accepted. Then it be, sort of fell out of favor. And now it's becoming a bit more in favor. And I'm not going to argue whether how much that the Iroquois influenced the Constitution. Right. I believe that they did influence. And let me use one example. John Rutledge, uh, the South Carolina delegate to the Constitutional Convention, stood up in front of the convention and said, okay, I'm going to read from this Iroquois Constitution. These are the words he read. 
we the people to establish a union for peace, equity, and order, which is almost word for word to the preamble of the Constitution. So how much of that, you know, the Iroquois Constitution influenced ours? Did con- Congress pass an act saying that, they were, you know, we were influenced the first uh uh, President Bush also uh, basically did a speech saying, yes, our right. Constitution has an influence, was influenced by the Iroquois. I don't know how much it was influenced. I think right. there was an influence. The question I, I, I want to raise, and this is something I thought was really intriguing, definitely uncontestable that the Iroquois had a very unique system of government. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, were, they basically were a representative form of government. Uh, women were involved in their government. It was very egalitarian. Uh, where did that come from? 250 years before, there was no type of government like that anywhere in the, in, in, uh, in the world, except on this continent. And where was it located? It was located in what would eventually be the backyard of the 13 colonies. They're right next door to us. Why did that happen? So I, I did more research into that. Where did, that, where did the Iroquois learn that constitution? And what I discovered was that that, that, that book of law, the book of peace that, the, that was the basis for the Iroquois constitution came from two Indian prophets. They sort of appeared out of nowhere with this basically new form of government. And when I say prophet, that's an Indian word I'm using. I'm not just making that word up. It's, that's the word that the Indian tribes used for these two men, Indian prophets, came basically with this law of peace. So it makes me wonder, you know, you've been talking a lot about the firm reliance of divine the protection providence, of divine yeah. providence. It makes me wonder how far back, how far in the past did that start? You know, was the, was the seed oh, started much it, earlier than even the founding of this country? Was those beginning. prophets put there in the past Basic again, in the backyard of our own 13 colonies. Yeah. Of all the planet, right in the backyard of the 13 colonies is unusual. What is the, what is the part of the, the seal? It's been a while since I've read it. The seal, in, is this true about the seal with the, um, the number of arrows and, and right. everything else? Tell me about that. The great seal. Everybody knows about the great seal, you know, the bald eagle holding the olive branch in one right. claw, the bundle of 13 arrows in the other. It goes back to, again, a story about one of those Iroquois chiefs. Uh, it was, his name was Conic Satego. He was uh, basically the rock star of the colonial era. He had the ear of the founding fathers. He did a lot of speeches. And at one treaty convention, he met with Benjamin Franklin. He gave Benjamin Franklin an arrow. And Benjamin Franklin, said, what's, what's this for? And then he took it back and he snapped the arrow in his hands and gave the pieces back to Benjamin Franklin. And then he turned around and grabbed a bundle of 13 arrows tied together. He tried to break that across his knee. They wouldn't break. He handed that bundle of 13 arrows to, to, to Franklin and said, you know, these squabbling 13 colonies are never going to last. You're only going to be strong if you unite as one. That so impressed Franklin that he wrote about that speech. He published that speech. You can, you can actually go online and read that speech. And... Franklin was uh, one of the um, designers of the Great Seal. He mm-hmm. was one of the committee members to design the Great Seal, which, by the way, going back to the, the earliest forms of those Great Seals, also were tied to, uh, to, the, to, Moses. to, to Jewish history. Yeah. They had one of, Jefferson wanted uh, the, uh, the Jews in the wilderness. Uh, Franklin, I think, wanted uh, a, a different version of it. But basically, mm-hmm. again, tying that all together back to the beginning. But again, Franklin was involved. That's why we have those 13 arrows clutched in the claw of the Great Seal. It is, is, a, a, is, 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 is honoring that, that, that suggestion that they had to unite together. It is not, a, it, it is not and I, I've, I, I hesitated. I told them um, uh, when I reached out to you and told you that I, I love the book, I, I um, um, you know, send the message that this isn't something that I'm... Um, I'm comfortable with saying to, you know, a mass audience, hey, because, you know, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't necessarily reflect on my personal faith in an accurate way. But I enjoyed the book a great, great deal. Well, that was um, the one thing is uh, you know, I'm writing this book for entertainment. I hope to, you know, maybe cast a little bit of light on on some, you know, mysteries and some some questions about the founding of this country. I think the I, I think the. Um, the relationship, and I've done a, a, a broadcast on this before, the relationship of our founding fathers with the Indians um, needs to be explored um, because we have so, with Jackson, we so wronged um, the Indians and uh, we erased their culture. Um, and we have to see that there, that we were not a country set up against the Native American. M- the, many of the Native Americans helped and um, understood freedom perhaps um, even better than than uh, than we did yep 
I uh, totally agree with that. Yeah, and if you look at if you look, William Penn was a was another one that really understood it and got it. The name of the book is The Devil Colony. I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, the Devil Colony, a Sigma Force novel. Um, it is available in uh, bookstores everywhere. If you are somebody that uh, has an open mind and wants to look at history and say, whoa, wait a minute. If you're somebody, I like to read books that drive me online and uh, make me look things up and say, wait a minute, hold it just a second. Is, is that true? Is that true? Um, this is one of those books, The Devil Colony, uh, available in bookstores everywhere. James, thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it.